The three worst judgments in the book of Revelation. The first is the judgment of the seals. The mere mention of the book of Revelation can send shivers down your spine, not because it is a horror story, but because it depicts the ultimate battle between good and evil, marking the end of the human journey. Revelation chapters 6 to 16 addresses Satan on earth. The seven seals are part of God's final judgments on the world. Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 to 17 details the seals. The action begins in chapter 5 of Revelation, with the search for someone in heaven and on earth, someone worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. The importance of the scroll becomes clear in light of the events. It must contain the program that will bring an end to the earthly historical era we live in. The seven seals in heaven, according to John's vision, hold a scroll, and as each seal is broken, a new judgment is unleashed on the world. The judgments of the trumpets and the judgments of the bowls or vials follow the judgments of the seals. The search for someone worthy to open the celestial scroll in Revelation 5 is the prelude to the opening of the seven seals in John's vision. John writes, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. This scroll includes God's judgments. No one was found worthy to break the seals and unlock the scroll, which saddened John. If the scroll could not be opened, evil would not be judged and would continue to plague the earth. As John wept over the unopened scroll and the intact seven seals, he receives excellent news. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and the seven seals. This is a representation of Jesus Christ, the sacrificial lamb who is also the lion of judgment. As Jesus takes the scroll to open the seals and pronounce judgment on the unbelieving world, beings in heaven glorify him with a new song. And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and break its seals, for you were sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased for God people from every tribe, language, people, and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects and priests to our God, and they will reign over the earth. In chapter 5, verse 22 of John. For the Father judges no one but has given all judgment, that is, the privilege of judging to the Son, putting it entirely in his hands. The Lamb begins to open the seals amidst the worship due to him. The scroll can be unrolled a bit more with each opened seal, exposing the judgments God has reserved for the time of tribulation, bit by bit. The first four of the seven seals open, releasing what are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse, because the judgments appear metaphorically as a horse and rider bringing destruction in their path. The first seal introduces the Antichrist, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Then I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals of the scroll, initiating the judgments, and I heard one of the four living creatures calling out as with a voice of thunder, Come! I looked and behold a white horse of victory, whose rider carried a bow, and a victory crown was given to him. He rode out conquering and to conquer. Various details are obtained from the biblical account. He rides a white horse, which represents peace at the beginning of tribulation. The Antichrist will appear under the guise of bringing world peace. The Antichrist receives a crown, indicating that he will wield enormous power. He advances as a conqueror destined for conquest while holding a bow, revealing his true intentions. The second seal, a great battle, breaks out in the world when the Lamb releases the second seal. This is represented by a rider on a fiery red horse wielding a huge sword. Revelation chapter 6 verses 3 and 4. When he, the Lamb, broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature calling out loudly, Come! Then there appeared a fiery red horse of bloodshed, and its rider was empowered to take peace from the earth, causing men to slay each other, and a great sword of war and violent death was given to him. The fiery red horse of the second seal represents the chaos that follows the initial period of peace that precedes the tribulation. The world will degenerate into violence, with people attempting to destroy each other. The third seal, famine results from the breaking of the third of the seven seals. 
The rider, seen by John, is on a black horse and carries a set of scales in his hand. Then John hears a proclamation that people will have to work all day for a small amount of food. Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. When he, the Lamb, opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature calling out loudly, Come! I looked, and behold, a black horse of famine, and the rider had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard something like a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not damage the oil and wine. The fourth seal. When the fourth seal is broken, John sees a pale horse, and the name of its rider was Death, and Hades followed him closely. As a result of the fourth seal, a quarter of the world's population is killed by sword, famine, and pestilence, as well as by the wild beasts of the earth. Revelation chapter 6 verses 7 and 8. When he, the Lamb, opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature calling, Come! Then I looked and behold, a pale greenish-gray horse, like a corpse, representing death and pestilence, and the name of its rider was Death, and Hades, the realm of the dead, was following with him. They were given authority and power over a quarter of the earth, to kill with sword, with famine, and with plague, disease, and by the wild beasts of the earth. The fifth seal, the fifth seal of the scroll indicates those who would be martyred during the tribulation for their faith in Christ, Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. When he, the Lamb, opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony they maintained, loyal to Christ. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, O Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth and are unregenerate? Then each was dressed in a white robe, and they were told to rest and wait quietly for a little longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers and sisters, who would be killed as they were, was completed. The Sixth Seal when the Lamb of God breaks the sixth seal, a great earthquake occurs, causing massive destruction and extraordinary astronomical phenomena. The sun turns black, the moon turns blood red, and the heavens recede like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 to 14. I looked when he, the Lamb, opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as a sackcloth made of hair, and the entire moon turned like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth like a fig tree, dropping its late summer figs when shaken by a strong wind. The sky was split apart, separated from the earth, and rolled up like a scroll, and every mountain and island were moved and shifted from their places. Survivors of the sixth seal, regardless of their social status, seek shelter in caves and cry out to the mountains and rocks for help. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who can withstand it? An intermission in the book of Revelation follows the opening of the sixth of the seven seals, the strange seal, Revelation chapter 8 verse 1. When he, the Lamb, opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour, in awe of God's impending judgment. The judgments that will lead to the end of the tribulation are now evident on the scroll, and they are so severe that all of heaven falls silent. The seventh seal clearly announces the beginning of the next round of judgments, as John immediately sees seven angels holding seven trumpets ready to sound. An eighth angel takes a censer and burns much incense, signifying the petitions of God's people. Revelation chapter 8 verse 5. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it to the earth, resulting in thunder, loud rumblings, noises and lightning, and an earthquake. When the judgments of the seven seals are completed, the second phase of the tribulation, which includes the seven trumpet judgments, will begin. In Revelation chapters 8 and 9, John describes a time near the end of the world 
when angels sound seven trumpets. Each trumpet heralds a new round of judgment upon the people of the earth. The seven trumpets are also described in Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 to 19. The trumpets represent disasters, and the judgments announced by the seven trumpets occur during the period of tribulation at the end of the world. Seven angels who stand in the presence of God receive seven trumpets, which will be used to trigger another round of judgments. The first trumpet, Revelation chapter 8, verse 7, the first angel blew his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled to the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned, and all the green grass was burned. This plague destroys a third of the world's trees and consumes all the grass. This judgment bears some resemblance to the seventh plague of Egypt. The second trumpet, Revelation chapter 8, verses 8 to 9, the second angel blew, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was hurled into the sea, and a third of the sea turned into blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. In the sky, a second angel blows a trumpet. The result is that something like a huge mountain all ablaze is thrown into the sea, a third of the sea turns into blood, a third of the ships sink, and a third of oceanic life dies. The third trumpet, Revelation chapter 8 verses 10 to 11, the third angel blew, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky onto a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The star is called Wormwood, and a third of the waters turned into Wormwood, and many people died from the waters because they were made bitter. The judgment of the third trumpet is similar to the second, except it affects the world's freshwater lakes and rivers instead of the oceans. Specifically, a great star, shining like a torch, falls from the sky and poisons a third of the water supply. The fourth trumpet, Revelation chapter 8 verses 12 to 13, the fourth angel blew, and a third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them were darkened, and the day did not shine for a third of it, and the night likewise. Then I looked and heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the other trumpet blasts of the three angels who are about to sound. The fourth of the seven trumpets causes changes in the heavens. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them darkened. A third of the day was without light, as was a third of the night, as per Revelation chapter 8 verse 12. After the judgment of the fourth trumpet, John notes a special warning given by an eagle flying through the air. This eagle cries out loudly, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the sound of the trumpet that is about to be blown by the other three angels. Revelation chapter 8 verse 13. For this reason, the fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpets are referred to as the three woes. The fifth trumpet, Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 5. Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and the key to the shaft of the abyss was given to him. He opened the shaft of the abyss, and smoke rose from the shaft like the smoke of a great furnace. The sun and the air were darkened by the smoke from the shaft. Out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and they were given power like the power of the scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, and they were not allowed to kill anyone, but only to torment for five months. And the torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a person. The angel of the abyss serves as king over these demonic locusts. In Hebrew, he is known as Abaddon, and in Greek as Apollyon, meaning the destroyer. The locusts themselves are described in unusual terms. They resemble horses prepared for battle, are adorned with what appear to be golden crowns, and their faces are vaguely human. They have hair like that of women and teeth like those of lions. Their wings sound like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle, and they wear iron breastplates. 
They have stingers in their tails like scorpions. These beings were given authority to torment anyone who does not have the seal of God. The pain they cause is so excruciating that the sufferers would wish to die. The sixth trumpet, the second woe, heralds the arrival of another demonic horde. When the sixth trumpet sounds, a voice from the altar of God calls for the release of four angels who were bound at the great river Euphrates. Revelation chapter 9 verses 13 to 15. Then the sixth angel blew, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been prepared for the hour, day, month, and year were released to kill a third of mankind. These four evil angels command a supernatural cavalry of thousands upon thousands to massacre a third of humanity. The horsemen wear red, dark blue, and yellow breastplates. Their horses have lion heads, and from their mouths issue fire, smoke, and sulfur, and their tails are like serpents. They use their mouths and their tails to kill. Despite the severity and horror of these plagues, the survivors on earth still refuse to repent. They continue in their idolatry, their murders, their sorcery, their sexual immorality, and their thefts. The seventh trumpet, the third woe, sounds and loud voices in heaven proclaim that the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. The 24 elders say, the time has come to destroy those who destroy the earth. God is about to finalize everything once and for all. At the sound of the seventh trumpet, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and inside his temple, the ark of his covenant was seen, accompanied by lightning, thunder, an earthquake, and a great hailstorm, verse 19. The judgments of the seven trumpets have come to an end, and everything is set for the seven angels with the seven bowls of God's wrath. These angels are now inside the now open temple, ready to move forward and bring the final judgments upon the earth. Revelation chapter 15. Number three, the seven bowls of revelation. The concept of the bowls, often referred to as the bowls of wrath or vials of wrath, is found in the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible. Essentially, these bowls are like containers of God's wrath. By this point, people had already committed many evil acts, especially under the leadership of someone called the Antichrist. Before the seven bowls are poured out, a series of other events and judgments occur. The first bowl, Revelation chapter 16 verses 1 to 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of God's wrath. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and a painful and harmful sore afflicted the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. The first angel carrying his bowl approached the earth and emptied its contents. Immediately a terrible change occurred. Those who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image, the very emblem of their rebellion against the Creator, were suddenly afflicted. A festering and repulsive sore appeared on their bodies. People who once proudly displayed their mark now suffered from painful sores on their skin, marks that had now become wounds. The second bowl, following the first, which brought painful sores to those bearing the mark of the beast, the heavens prepared for another significant act. The angel advanced, holding the bowl filled with a mysterious liquid. Revelation chapter 16 verse 3 recounts the moment. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. As the contents of the bowl touched the waters of the earth, a chilling transformation began. The clear blue ocean, teeming with life, began to change into a deep, thick red color. It resembled the dark, thick blood one would see from a dead body. This change was not merely symbolic or superficial. The transformation was profound, altering the very essence of the waters. The third bowl, the rivers and springs of water were not spared either. They too were turned into blood. The very essence of life was transformed into a symbol of death. Revelation chapter 16 verse 4. 
Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. This complete contamination contrasts with the partial pollution of a third of the fresh water shown in Revelation 8. In the face of such terrible judgments, John's vision serves as a stern warning, urging us to heed the words of the Almighty, to turn away from wickedness, and to seek refuge only in God's grace. The fourth bowl, the time for the fourth bowl had come. An angel advanced, holding the next vessel of judgment. The target of this bowl was neither land nor water, but the very sun that illuminates the sky. Revelation chapter 16 verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. Suddenly, things began to change. The sun, which had always been a source of light, warmth and sustenance, was given a new and terrible power. It began to burn the earth with an intensity never seen before. It was unbearable. Everywhere people felt as if they were trapped in an oven, their skin crackling under the relentless fire from above. The pain was intense, burning every bone, every fiber of their beings. And as they were burned by the great heat, their hearts, instead of turning to God for mercy, hardened. They shook their fists at the sky, not asking for help, but showing anger and disrespect towards God. The fifth bowl, by the command of the heavens, the fifth angel advanced, directing his bowl not at the seas, mountains, or rivers, but directly at the very throne of the beast, the epicenter of evil. Revelation chapter 16 verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness, and they gnawed their tongues in pain. When this bowl was poured out, it caused the sun to disappear, turning the realm of the beast completely dark. Imagine a world without any light at all, where it is so dark that you cannot see anything. This darkness was not calm or comforting. It felt heavy and made people extremely uncomfortable. The profound darkness, however, was just the beginning of their torment. The darkness of the fifth bowl is a foretaste of hell itself. Those under the judgment of this fifth bowl are, so to speak, on the shores of the lake of fire. You might think that in the midst of such suffering, people might fall to their knees, crying out for mercy or forgiveness, even as they suffered. But instead of seeking forgiveness, they chose to resist God's warnings. Instead of crying out for help or praying, they spoke with disrespect. The sixth bowl, in the hands of the sixth angel, held a bowl filled with God's judgment. It was clear that this vessel had a divine purpose, and the angel understood the gravity of its contents. The whole cosmos seemed to pause in anticipation of what was about to happen. The angel poured his bowl over the expanse of the great river Euphrates, an event of such magnitude that it could only be best described by John, who witnessed it. Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 The angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. As the waters of the great river Euphrates receded, what once blocked the path now became a clear way. The Euphrates River, an extensive part of the Fertile Crescent area, is a significant landmark in Scripture and a valuable resource in the Middle East as it flows through Turkey, Syria and Iraq. The seventh bowl in the heavens, the scene was dramatic. The seventh angel, with the final bowl of God's punishment, was ready to pour it out. This was not just any bowl, it was like the last chapter of all the judgments that came before it, truly showing how severe and final God's decision was. Revelation chapter 16 verse 17 Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. This proclamation was not just an announcement, but an affirmation of the completion of God's definitive judgment on earth. After this, the sky reacted strongly, Revelation chapter 16 verse 18, and there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and there was a great earthquake, such as there had never been since mankind was on the earth. So great was the quake and so mighty. 
This was not a common storm. It was the most powerful the world had ever seen. The intense earthquake was a testament to how serious God's final decision was, and nature was disturbed in the spiritual world because of it. As the dust settled, another profound revelation emerged. Babylon, that great city representing human pride, disobedience and decay, was remembered before God, and in that remembrance she received the cup of his fierce wrath. A once formidable and dominant city, now split and fractured into three distinct parts, and its destruction was not an isolated event. Around the globe, other cities, bastions of human civilization, crumbled and collapsed in rapid succession. The great year of human achievements was being rapidly reduced to ruins. This announcement, coming from the throne itself, tells us that there will be no more delay in mercy. God extended this scene as far as possible. The seals were followed by trumpets, the trumpets were followed by bowls, but there will be no more judgments on earth after this. It is done. In these final judgments, God shakes the earth with a tremendous earthquake. In the chaos, it is natural to wonder how humanity reacted. Ideally, we would hope for repentance or an acknowledgement of the divine hand at work. However, even as huge hailstones fell from the sky, the human spirit remained stubborn. Instead of seeking forgiveness or understanding, people cursed God. Revelation chapter 16 verse 21. Huge hailstones, about the weight of a talent each, fell from heaven onto people, and people blasphemed against God because of the plague of the hail, because the plague was extremely severe. Their hearts, hardened by years of rebellion, could not comprehend the magnitude of their error. Thus, the seventh bowl was not merely a demonstration of God's power, but a clear indication of human fragility and the consequences of persistent disobedience. The story serves as a somber reminder that, while God is patient and merciful, there comes a time when justice must prevail. The book of Revelation speaks about the end of the world and God's ultimate plan. With each bowl poured out, the urgency and gravity of God's judgment become clearer. The purpose of the events described is not to cause fear, but rather to emphasize the significant consequences of a society that rejects its creator. The narrative presents the wrath of God. The judgments serve as a profound testament to God's righteous indignation against the wickedness and rebellion of humanity. As each bowl is poured out, the earth experiences unprecedented calamities, from painful sores afflicting people, Revelation chapter 16 verse 2, to the sun scorching the earth with intense heat, Revelation chapter 16 verse 8. It is crucial to understand why these events are significant according to the Bible. They are like puzzle pieces that fit into a larger picture. These events are part of God's grand plan, serving as a reminder that God is in control of everything. Leave your opinion about the video topic in the comments, always respecting the opinions of others. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found this content valuable, please support me by subscribing so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Share this video with family and friends, give it a like, and leave your opinion in the comments. This helps the video reach more people. Together, we can enlighten more minds and expand our understanding. Thank you for being here, and may God bless you.